So my task was to reinvestigate, look at if there was any new leads, to see if there was any possibility of bringing a name and closure to the case by identifying body 115. My attention was then drawn to the Sujita clip. Only 300 or so of these clips were ever imported into the country from Japan. That kind of number, 100 in a population of nearly 60 million, starts to become statistically significant. Our problem was over 40 or so medical institutes had had these clips at some stage. And of course, back in the 80s, medical records weren't computerised. Further review then brought to my attention Alexander Fallon. And of course, the thing that immediately struck me was that there was mention that he had collapsed in London in 1980 and had neurosurgery and a clip placed in his head. Uh, Ian Wilkinson, absolutely dogged to get to the end of this case, um, set off to sit in some dark and dusty room in the bottom of London Hospital to pull through records, some of which had just been put onto early computer systems. Ian's determination eventually not only found that Alexander Fallon had been admitted to the Royal London in September 1980, but actually an aneurysm had been clipped. What came next was a, a break of luck in the investigation is that the surgeon's name was David Hardy. Um, he clearly couldn't remember Alexander Fallon or performing the operation all those years before in 1980. But on seeing the surgery, he said that that looked very similar to how he would operate. Without prompting, uh, and this was you know, an amazing uh, moment for the investigation, he said, well, if I'd carried out at that time, the clip I would have used would have been a Sujita clip. Um, and that was without any prompting, which really, really, you know, struck me. Uh, and I questioned him to, the Royal London said they didn't use Sujit Eclipse. And Mr Hardy turned around and said, that it confirmed that was right, that so much did he prefer them that he would take Sujit Eclipse from other institutions to the London to use them. It was at this point I was convinced beyond all reasonable doubt that we had correctly identified body 115. It, it's very easy to say that the reinvestigation um, identified him, but the fact is all the hard work that the original investigation team had carried out was actually the things that actually led us to the conclusion. So I think it's a great piece of teamwork by the British Transport Police, which we can all be very proud of. And it was in June 2004 that we went to Finchley and exhumed the body of Alexander Fallon, who was then cremated and his ashes returned to his native Scotland.